Hello, I'm Joshua Farnsworth and welcome to my workshop. I wanted to share a little video with you about an experiment I really recently undertook uh, with seeing how well readily available ammonia from hardware stores would work in doing ammonia fuming uh, on this Moravian footstool that I had recently built. Uh, so what is ammonia fuming? So ammonia is called ammonium hydroxide. And what that does is when you expose, when you put a, a, a piece of furniture like this in an enclosed space, uh, in my case, I put it in a, co a cooler, and you put it, put it uh, with some ammonia, small amount of ammonia in a little cup, and you close the lid, uh, the gases in the ammonium hydroxide will actually react with the tannins in the wood. So uh, this particular stool I made out of quarter sawn white oak, you can see the beautiful figure. So the ammonia, what it does, you, you do this prior to adding a finish to actually darken the wood. That, uh, that reaction with the tannins actually darkens the wood and gives you a really beautiful dark color. Uh, so the, <laughs> apparently this is how it goes, the history of ammonia fuming. Uh, in England, some farmers, I guess, started figuring out that the horse urine was causing, in their barns, was causing their wood that they stacked to turn a nice dark brown, and they experimented with it. I don't know how accurate that is, but it's a nice story. Uh, but then this uh, ammonia fuming got really popular in the 1800s in England and in the United States during the arts and crafts movement. This uh, is one of my favorite types of furniture, and it really makes this figure pop. You can see here on this, on this uh, stool. Uh, ammonia fuming was kind of discontinued after, after it had been done on a, a large scale, especially by Stickley, the Stickley company. Uh, it was discontinued largely because of the safety and with a lot of employees, but um, a lot of woodworkers now do it because they, you know, take a lot of safety precautions. And I would, I would warn you, if you try this, make sure you use some good strong gloves and a face shield or, or goggles and a, and a respirator or a, a mask and definitely do it outside. Um, I thought that I could quickly open the cooler here in my workshop <laughs> and uh, it was open for just a few seconds and it filled my whole workshop, probably under five seconds, filled my whole workshop with, with this, uh, chemical, this cleaning chemical uh, and it was really hard to breathe. So make sure you do it outside. So a lot of people who teach ammonia fuming, they tell you to go find blueprint uh, ammonia, which used to be common like when I was in high school, <laughs> back in the Stone Age. You know, I took, an I took uh, drafting and architecture classes because I wanted to be an architect one day. And uh, there was, you know, plenty of that ammonia floating around there. But it's kind of hard to find commercial grade uh, ammonia now. So I decided to go to a couple different hard store hardware stores and buy different types of ammonia uh, in, uh, and uh, to, to experiment with. And it's, you know, two or three dollars for a bottle, which is really cheap. And I wanted to see what kind of reaction I could get. So I compared those two just to see what I was able to get. And as you can see, uh, obviously they did work. One of them worked better than the other. And I wanted to show you a little bit about that experiment and how I came, how I discovered kind of a little, uh, a little tip by accident that ended up making this even more beautiful and a little more darker. So why don't I just take the next few minutes to show you the experiment and the procedure I went through and what I discovered. Thanks for watching. The blue container contains my sample that's exposed to the Ace Hardware janitorial strength ammonia, which supposedly has 10% ammonia, and the red cooler has ammonia from Lowe's, which has no uh, mention of concentration. So starting off with the Ace Hardware, I had put some painter's tape around the sample board uh, to try and uh, see the difference before and after. It didn't quite work. But uh, something really neat that I did discover is that I put my beeswax and oil finish on one side prior to the fuming, and uh, I didn't get much of a dramatic result with normal fuming from the first day, but the, there was quite an extraordinary uh, ex result with the beeswax and oils finish that had been applied beforehand. So uh, this is the Lowe's version. It must have had a lot lower concentration because I really didn't see too much more too much change after the first day. Uh, I did see a bit, but it was a, a less dark, more of an amber color finish. And so that was the result from the first day. You can see the end grain 
It still looks nice and it's definitely working, just not as uh, strong as the, the Ace Hardware, which here you see on the second day, I took the Ace Hardware janitorial strength and fumed it for another day and it got much darker. This is the side without the beeswax oil finish. Um, as you can see, the tape really didn't, it, it blocked some of the ammonia fuming, but that'll give you an idea that it's getting darker. I would recommend to experiment with different uh, types of ammonia and different lengths of days on uh, the sample board that comes from the same wood as your furniture that you're fuming. Uh, so that was, that was quite a bit darker. And uh, back to the lows on the second day, the lows ammonia on the second day. As you can see, it, it definitely darkened some more too, especially on the side that had the beeswax and oil finish um, applied prior to the fuming. Uh, it's pretty nice looking, but uh, the back side can't tell quite as much difference, but it's still nice. So here are the final results of the test pieces. This is the control piece, one that hasn't been exposed to anything. You can see how much wider it is and it's got some reds in it. And this is the, the piece from with the Ace Hardware fuming on it. Uh, obviously that uh, the tape didn't block out uh, it's what it should like look should look like so try to just com compare that with the control piece so you can see how that one was much darker stripped out the reds um, and this is the, pe the 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 piece on the right is from Lowe's you can see how it has more of the reds and it didn't have as dramatic of a an effect but that may be something that you like so keep that in mind and just experiment with it so flipping the pieces over, you can see the side that has the mixture of the beeswax, uh, linseed oil, and turpentine. Uh, you can see compared to the control, got really dramatic results. Uh, on uh, Obviously, the, uh, the Ace Hardware version is really nice and dark, and the Lowe's version of the ammonia is not nearly as dark. It still has an amber color, but that may be what you like. So let's put them side by side so you can see the real difference between the two results. And here's the end grain, so you can see it as well. Um, so I decided I would go with the Ace Hardware Janitorial Strength Ammonia for my Moravian footstool here, and that I would definitely go with applying my beeswax and oil finish beforehand. So I just uh, put it on all over. You can just use a, a lint-free cloth or a t-shirt or something to wipe it on. Make sure you get the end grain really well. and. And then uh, after I apply it liberally, I don't wipe it off. I just go and I set it in the sun near a window and let it sit for a day or two or however many, however many days you want and flip it to make sure it gets some even lighting. And that will help start to darken it a little bit more and uh, absorb the finish in. So then I stuck it in there and uh, put it in for two or three days, I can't remember, but just even though you did your sample pieces, still come back and check it uh, to make sure you're getting the darkness that you like. If it's not going as dark as you want, start over and put some new ammonia in it. So you can see afterwards, I again applied some of my beeswax and turpentine and uh, linseed oil finish. If you would like to, if you would like to have me do a video on this recipe, please comment below and let me know and uh, if I have a demand for that I will. But I just rub this in uh, liberally and it gives it a beautiful beautiful natural looking finish and I put it all over making sure to get it on the top and bottom and the end grain and you can see the results that I got. It's just really quite dramatic. It's nice darkened piece with just beautiful finish. Obviously it won't be this glossy afterwards. This is after it's still wet and I just let it sit in the sun for however many days I want until it gets a little bit darker and it's just beautiful. So I hope you get to try this out for yourself and I hope thanks for watching and I hope you uh, get some beautiful furniture. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!